Hey guys, uh, Coach Taylor here. Um, got a basketball this week. So this week, that means that we're in the middle of basketball. Um, you know, they only have class for two days this week. So not only are we going to be doing basketball this week, we'll be doing basketball next week as well. Okay. Now, as we, so this is, I'm in the sixth grade module, seventh and sixth grade are the exact same module. So this is what it looks like when you open up your page. Now, I want to make sure you're going to your daily announcements right here. Go to your daily announcements. I also make a little video for you guys each morning. Um, here's some quizzes. If you have not done your stress quizzes, please do so right here, right now. Uh, modules. So you want to go to your modules. Then once you go to your modules, you'll need to be able to go to this week, the week of November 23rd through to December the 4th. Okay, this is where you need to go to. But I'm going to come back and we're going to look at it through this page right here. Same thing. All right, so here's your learning announcement for the week. Here's your standards, objectives, your learning target for the week. Here's your basketball presentation, a brief timeline of basketball in your basketball quiz. Look, guys, right here, December the 4th. That is when this quiz is due. It's not due this Friday. It's due next Friday. Okay. So let's get into our basketball presentation. Let's take a look at it and see what it is that we're going to learn about basketball. Kobe White, we talked about earlier this year. We introduced you guys to Kobe White. He's a former basketball player here at Eastern Wayne. And um, not only he played basketball at Eastern Wayne, he played UN, he played basketball at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, he is currently playing with the Chicago Bulls. He was a first round draft pick in 2019. Um, that's pretty awesome right there. A local guy right here from Goldsboro in the NBA. All right, so your objectives. So today, uh, during this lesson, you are going to learn in, about the history of basketball. You're going to talk about some of the rules, regulations. I'm, I'm going to show you or try to demonstrate some of the skills needed while playing basketball. And then I want you to try to play with someone. Um, you can, you may not be able to, but uh, I kind of want you to do your own research on basketball. Throughout this presentation, there's going to be some videos. I'm not going to show you, but you need to look at these videos on your own because it's going to be demonstrations of how to shoot, how to do a layup, how to rebound, um, how to block shots, um, stuff like that. So you can look at that particular situation then. So basketball is a sport played by two teams of five players on a rectangular court. Now, those that are in the gym, I know you've all been to the gym. That is your basketball court. Okay. Now, we've talked about playing football or basketball on the basketball court this year already. So your basketball court is a rectangular court. It's one of the most popular sports in the world and it's widely viewed. Now the other sport that's really, really popular, we talked about last week with soccer. So basketball is our next favorite sport. Um, it is a team sport. We talked about team sports and individual sports. So basketball is your team sport. And it's a sport uh, scored by a field goal. Talking about field goal, that's not that's football. No, a field goal is when this basketball basketball goes through the hoop. That is called or goes through the goal. That is called a um, a field goal by shooting the ball during regular play. All right. The objective of the game is to shoot this ball through the hoop. This hoop right here is 18 inches around 18 inches in diameter and it's 10 feet off the ground okay december 1891 dr james naismith um founded basketball at a ymca um he was trying to keep his uh gym classes um active during the cold months so therefore he invented the game of basketball and you can see it was founded in Massachusetts, so you can you can probably understand how cold it was actually was up in Massachusetts during that time of the year. So um, he invented the game. There he is, Dr. Nasif, right here. 
you can see that the first basketball was really played with a soccer ball. We'll talk about that later on. But you can see how dark brown it was. It was played with like some uh, potato baskets. There may be a hole in this one. They may not be. Um, when they first started to play, and they had to keep a ladder on the back side of the goal. And then when someone actually made the basket, they had to get the ladder, go up and get the ball out of the basket, and then they continue playing. So you can see the game has evolved, evolved over the last many, many, many years. All right, so again, it was originally played with a soccer ball. Uh, the first balls that they played basketball field, basketball were with like really, really brown, a dark brown. And it was only until the mid-50s uh, that Tony Hinkle uh, thought that playing with an orange ball would be more visible uh, to the players and to the spectators. So that's when the orange ball was created in the uh, late 1950s. Um, dribbling was not part of the game at all mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Um, it just was not. Um, a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, the, what they really want to do with basketball at the very beginning was just pass. Now, this is a chest pass. You have your bounce pass, your overhead pass, and then you push pass. All right. But uh, dribbling is when you dribble the ball on the ground. That's not really, really part of the game. Um, they really wanted to pass the ball back and forth, teammate to teammate, like you would in soccer. Um, but eventually dribbling uh, became part of the game. Pretty interesting fact. I did not realize that until I started doing research on this. Uh, you can see that the first game was played January the 20th, 1892, but with nine players. But then fast forward, you know, five, six years later, Teams on the court became five and five. Um, that's because the court was so much smaller um, than what they had realized before. And plus, he was trying to get his classes uh, engaged in something inside. So he was trying to get something where all his classmates, all his, um, his students could play at one time. This, so this right here is a, hist is a history video. Um, I'm not going to hit play right now. Uh, I want you to sit here and watch it, though. Um, so go through this PowerPoint, and you can come back through, and you can hit play on this particular um, um, YouTube video. All right, so um, the next thing we're going to take a look at, and now this ball right here is actually a women's ball. And you can see right here on the video, 28.5. That means it's a girl's ball women's ball uh the men's ball does not have the actual size written on the ball like this does um the men's ball is a one inch larger um the women's ball uh starting in middle school all the way up to the WNBA, play with a 28.5 ball okay and it's actually two ounces less than the women's i mean more the women's ball is two ounces less than the men's ball uh, I'm going to show you three different courts. Uh, all, most basketball, well, all basketball courts really in college in the NBA are going to be 93, 94 foot courts. Uh, your middle school courts are typically going to be 84 foot courts. High school, um, they can either be 84 or 94 foot courts. The, the court that we have at Eastern Wayne Middle School is going to be a 84 foot court. Uh, your newer gymnasiums at Eastern Wayne High School, however, will be a 94 foot court. Um, all, but again, all courts will be 50 foot wide. You can the number one difference that you'll see when you look at these courts is going to be the three point line. If you stand and shoot a shot behind this three point line, that's worth three points. Anything in front of that line is going to worth two points. If you shoot a free throw, this is your free throw line. You make a free throw, it is worth one point, okay? Uh, so there's your NBA court. Here's going to be your college dimensions and then your high school court. The high school three-point line touches the top of the free throw lane right here. And this is your free throw lane. Um, this is your center of the court. Uh, this is where the jump ball take places. 
will take place, and they only do one jump ball per game. And that'll be at the very, very beginning of the game. All right. So here is your court right here. And you can see, um, you know, the, the goal right here is not directly on the out of bounds. It's not on the baseline. You can see the gap between here and here. Uh, it's about a four foot gap where um, you can run through. So basic skills, we're going to briefly talk about the positions of basketball, shooting, dribbling, rebounding, passing, and blocking. Uh, positions, there's five positions on a court or you have five different people that play on a court. Uh, you know, you, normally you have one guard, two forwards, or two centers, makes five. Or when I coached middle school basketball, I had two guards, two, you know, two guards, two forwards, and one center on my basketball team. All right, point guard, they can dribble, they can pass. They're the leader of the team. Um, they see the floor. They're like the quarterback of football. So that's what the quarterback is. Shooting guard, they shoot the ball a lot. Um, they do a very, very good job of shooting, making their shots, and um, you know, just they're very, very. They, and they play good defense on the perimeter, which is like the three-point line area. Uh, small forward, they normally play down low in the paint area. Um, they do a good job getting rebounds and steals. The power forward is a stronger person. Um, they really jump up, get the rebound, and they control the ball. All right, the center, normally the tallest uh, player on the court. Uh, they use your size to score a little bit easier uh, than, say, your guard. All right, shooting. Uh, the act of shooting is you're trying to score the points because you're trying to score getting the ball through the hoop, which is called a field goal. So normally the the um, team with the most field goals in a game is going to win the ball game. Okay. Now, when I get ready to shoot, I want to keep this finger, the ball in my fingertips. And I shoot, this is straight up, ball in my fingertips. Okay, I'm using my other hand as a guy. So when I'm shooting, I'm shooting just like this, and I'm shooting up, okay? And we're going to see a video here in a few minutes of uh, someone demonstrating and teaching you guys how to shoot the ball. Um, again, you know, standing, you're shooting. Now, there's three, three, three different types, jump shot, layup, and a slam dunk. Uh, here's the jump shot. Uh, you can see the progression of the jump shot starting out, knees slightly bent right here. Uh, let's go back. And then final uh, full extension right here of the arms and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is um, Syracuse University's head basketball coach talking about the jump shot. I want you to take a look at this jump shot video and see what you can learn from it, okay? Uh, the next one's layup. Uh, layup's probably going to be one of the easiest um, to do. Layup, normally one hand up. Uh, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to go up left hand, up knee, left knee. If I'm right-handed, right leg up and right arm up to the hoop, okay? Up to the basket. You're jumping off one foot at this particular moment in time, okay? Uh, and again, here's another video of progressions for a dribble layup. And again, again, we're not going to go through the videos at this point. Slam dunk. Um, that's another jump shot. I mean, it's another uh, field goal. Uh, it's another type of shot. Uh, that means you're grabbing onto the rim and you're dunking the basketball. Uh, there's a quick video of Michael Jordan doing a slow motion shot. He was my favorite basketball player growing up. Um, and he's from Wilmington, North Carolina. Again, he played at Carolina, and then he went on to the Chicago Bulls, almost like what Kobe White did, uh, you know, except Kobe's from Goldsboro and not Wilmington. All right. So our next uh, thing we're going to talk about is rebounding. 
I like to rebound. That was one of my things that I did a very good job at when I grew up playing basketball was getting rebounds. So rebound is when someone takes a shot and they miss the shot and that person has to go up underneath the goal and try to grab the rebound. When you grab the rebound, if you're on offense, you can go right back up and try to score again. Or if you're on defense, you want to control the ball, maybe pivot, okay? Pivot means that you're, you're spinning on one foot and getting the ball to your guard, out to the wing, okay? Um, the team that gets the most rebounds in a game, probably going to win the ball game. Uh, rebounding is one of the, the lost arts of basketball, I believe. So having good a good rebounding team defensively or offensively is going to win you some games. And again, two categories, offense and defense. Now here's uh, Team USA showing us how to different types of rebounding drills. Okay. My, all right, passing. Here we're going to, a couple last things we're going to talk about before we um, move on to our next um, thing today is chest pass. Mm -hmm. When I get ready to pass this basketball, both of my feet are going to be in power position. I'm, I'm in power position right now. A chest pass is when I start the ball at my chest and I'm going to pass it to you. And I'm throwing it to your chest. Okay. And that's kind of like a 10 to 5 foot to 10 foot pass. Push pass is the same type of pass as chest, except now if I want to push uh, pass the ball over here and I've got a defender on me, I want to step through the defender and then pass the ball. That way I step, I push pass, I step through, causing some type of separation between me and my defender and I'm pushing the ball through. Okay, so that's going to be your push pass. All right, your bounce pass. Again, the ball starts at your chest, and basically you're stepping, except you want to bounce the ball about halfway between you and the person that you're bouncing the ball to. Again, this is going to be a 5 to 10 foot pass, and that is it. Okay, your overhead pass. Again, you're going to start the ball over your head, and you're throwing this ball a long ways. This pass might be a 30 foot pass. It may be a 50 foot pass. Um, so it's gonna be one of your longer passes that you make in a game. All right, and again, and again, you still want to step through, through your pass, okay? And again, I have another passing video for you that talks about it all the way through and breaks it down for you, okay? All right, now, so the next thing that we are going to talk about, I'm gonna go back to my module because that's the end of our presentation right there. Um, this is a timeline of basketball. I thought it was pretty interesting and, and cool. Um, so I want you to take a look at the timeline of basketball. And then the last thing that you'll need to complete um, for this particular module is going to be your quiz. Again, it's 10-question quiz. Uh, talks about some of the things that we talked about uh, during this particular presentation. Talks about Dr. James Naismith. Um, was a football used in basketball? Um, there's a jump ball start each half. We did talk about that. Uh, the answer to here would be false because it's only at the beginning of each game. Okay, so I want you to go through this particular quiz. Okay, go through this quiz. Uh, and then once you get finished, just hit submit quiz and your results will be given to you. Again, uh, you got you have till December the 4th to complete this module. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Again, my live sessions are typically Mondays and Tuesdays. Thursdays and Fridays from, um, sorry about that guys, from nine, from 8.45 to 9.15, but uh, you can email me through Canvas. You can also email me at michaeltaylor at wcps.org and 
I'm also in class dojo. Thanks a lot, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it.